Hi, this video is um, one of multiple videos that I will be creating about cat puzzles. So uh, in this video, I'll show you how to create a puzzle made out of little pieces, and it happens to be a cat picture. And this is the picture that we'll be using. To create the puzzle, we need to write some code. And to write code, we can use a programming language like Python. So the first thing we need to do is create a file called make.py, for example. And for those of you unfamiliar with this, this is OS X or Mac, and this is the terminal. I'm using the command line to create a file. And now I can open that file in my editor, which is right here. And then I can open that file and start writing things in it. For example, first thing I can do is just print hello and then go back to terminal and run Python with that file and it will print the hello message. Okay, so we want to do something a little bit more interesting than just printing hello. We want to take this cat picture first thing and load it up into our code. And to do that, there is a library called Pillow, which I already have installed. But if you don't have it installed, then you can do something like, uh, you know, pip install Pillow. Or you can just Google it and it will give you the command to do that. So now that we have Pillow installed, the way to import the library is import pill, and pill stands for pillow, and it's uppercase. But we don't want the entire thing, so we just want the image library part. So what we can do instead is say from pillow import image. And that will give us image only. So this is less wasteful. And with image, we can do open and give it a file. Any file, as long as it's an image file. So in our case, the file is called cat.jpg. JPG and this will load the image and I will put it in a variable called image and to make sure that it worked we can print image size dot size will give us the size of the image and let's see if that works so if we run our code we get 1000 by 800 for the size which seems about right that's the number of pixels horizontally and vertically and in fact I will assign that to another variable called image width so if you do bracket 0 that will give you the first number this one and if you do bracket 1 it will give you the second number so if I do 1 here and then this will be the height so now we have image height and width so we can do the same thing and print those to make sure they are what we expect them to be and as you can see, we get exactly the same thing so because we're just assigning the same values to different variables. The next thing we need to do is decide how big our puzzle is going to be. How many pieces do we want our puzzle to have? And to do that, we need to basically count the number of rows and the number of columns and multiply them together to get the number of pieces. For example, if our row count is 10, and our column count is also 10, then desired pieces is going to be row times column. So now we, we can print that. In our case, we should get 10 times 10, which is 100. Let's see if that's what we get. And it is what we get. So we can print a nice message here saying desired number of puzzle pieces is percent D basically replaces whatever you put after this with that and D stands for decimal um, or integer so any number uh, a number that is an integer we can put here and it will print that number instead so let's see what we get versus desired number of puzzle pieces is 100 which is what we expect if you put 30 let's say 31 and 31, let's see, what is that going to be? Probably 961, which is not quite 
1,000. If you want to get 1,000, you probably have to do 32. And you need 32. Times 32, you get 1024, which is close enough. So we'll leave it like that. The next thing we need to do is, now that we know how many pieces we have, we need to split the image into little pieces. So we can call that piece width and piece height. So how do we calculate these values? Piece width would be just the image width, which is right here, divided by the number of columns. So if you think of the image and you draw lines on vertically, you draw 32 lines on the image, you take the image width, you divide it by 32, and you get individual piece width. And for the height, similarly, you take the image, entire image height, divided by the number of rows that you uh, number of rows that you're gonna have, and that will give you the height of each um, little piece. Okay, so next thing we need to know a box um, for each piece. So each piece will move if you think of it like a scanner or a printer going from left to right, top to bottom. Then you need to have a point here and then a point here to represent a little piece. And you can think of that as a box. Uh, and this is a square box in this case, but it could be a rectangle box. And all you need to know to create this box is the coordinate for this point and for this point. As you can see, if you know those two X and Y values, then you can create this exact box. So that's what we're gonna do. We can create a box. So the left side will be the point one, which will have point one X and then point one X and point one Y. And then the bottom right is gonna be point two X and point two Y. So this is just what I call these values, which we'll have to calculate still. So that's just the name. Um, in order to do that, I'm gonna comment these out first to make sure this is not code, otherwise we'll get errors. So we needed to run a loop. So for i in range row count. So basically this will loop over from zero to this value. In this case, this is 32. So it's gonna loop whatever is under this 32 times. If you don't trust me, you can see that here. I'll just print i and we can go and see what we get in the terminal. As you can see we get all the numbers up to 31 because it also includes zero. So that's actually 32 numbers. Okay, so so we need to do that for the rows and we also need to do it for the columns. So we can do the same exact thing inside for each one of those rows, we need to do one loop for all the columns as well. So as you can imagine, that's a lot of loops, a lot of cycles, which is exactly what we want to get a thousand pieces. So now we can use our box code here uh, to calculate the box like we discussed here. And P1X is going to be, so I'm just gonna remove that and put the actual value. Let's go with I times the width of the piece. So if you think of what this box looks like, it's basically moving every time, right? So we're moving it to the right. So we do this and do this and that and that, and just keep doing that. And once we're done with that row, we go to the next row and basically, we basically do the same exact iteration, which is going to be something like this. Yeah, and then again, we just copy that and keep going like that. And so this first loop is the row and the second loop is the column. Uh, and then, you know, once we go through every column, for the first row, so we are here at the first row. Then we go, like I showed you, we go column by column, like this, right here, for J in row, range column count. We just keep going like this until 32 times, so I keep going. So that means the, our box will have 
it's left side and it's left point moving one at a time so it's left side is this value here so that would be in our case j that keeps going like that so in the first case that would be zero so zero times piece width would still be zero so that's the x value of that point and the y value of that point should be calculated based on the i here because we're not moving the y yet for all these values the y should remain the same therefore we have to use the i times piece width since that's the height sorry piece height since that's the height the y keeps moving and then for same exact thing just copy that and paste it here for this value the only difference here is that you have to add one to each one of these to get something that is not zero otherwise you get zero so again like this is just one iteration ahead of this point so this point is just one like one width more and one height more than this point and that's why we put the one plus one and that should give us the box and in order to see if the box is actually moving as we expected like this we can actually crop the image so the image that we have we can do crop give it the box and this pillow library is smart enough that you give it the box for an image as long as you give it the right pixels and the right location for each box then it will give you back another image with a smaller cropped area with that size that you give it and then you can save that to another file so in our case we can go here and see create a directory called make directory called um, pieces so now we can put as you can see i just create a directory called pieces there's nothing in it right now if i pieces so I'm just going to use two numbers here to represent the file name and .jpg. And again, I just need two numbers and I'm just going to use i and j here just to name the file. And let's go ahead and run it and see what we get. And now we can open the directory. So that's our cat and that's our Python file. And this is our directory pieces let's open that and wow uh, here we are we have a lot of little pieces and they're very small we can see the i here and this is the numbers that we use i and j that jpg and this is really beautiful again this is made out of that one image that we had here in the next lesson i will go over how to make these pieces look like an actual puzzle piece because right now they're just little squares but we need to actually make them look like a puzzle with rounded stuffs coming out and going in so they fit into each other okay so see you in the next video bye